In a previous video, I discussed earn value, what earn value is, and some earn value formulas. In this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the tools that we have in Microsoft Project to compute earn value for us. While we're there, let's take a look at some handy reports as well. Now, I already have this project, and I have set a baseline on the project earlier, and the baseline effectively says, okay, at this point in time, this is what we believe the schedule and the budget to be. And uh, you need that for earned value. You need to set the baseline, and then as you adjust the schedule and as you adjust the budget, it will comp uh, compute a lot of these metrics for us. First, let's look at some reports. If we take a look at in progress, we can see critical tasks, anything on the critical path, uh, and then we can also see late tasks. Now, naturally, this will play into our earned value calculation uh, because these are things that are late, right? So we see a little pie chart here with things in the future, uh, anything that's late, which is significant in this project, I haven't updated it in a while, and then things that are on schedule in blue. Uh, if you're a project manager, you know, keep things updated, and then it's handy to keep an eye on this so that you can look out for any risk and see if maybe we need to redirect people uh, to, uh, to those tasks that are late. Slipping tasks anything in the schedule that is slipping. Now we go back to our Gantt chart view, okay, and we see that we have our, uh, our different uh, activities, our work breakdown structure packages, who's assigned to them, uh, any resources that they need. Earn value is quite handy in project, although I will tell you it's, it's just a little tricky to find. We need to go here to view and then tables and then more tables. And I'll tell you, there's a treasure here of tables uh, worth checking out even beyond uh, earned value. But nonetheless, choose earned value and then apply. And you see that this is giving us our schedule variance. So our foundational task, we see a significant schedule variance. We also have our cost variance. And then we have our estimated completion, our budget at completion, and a variance at completion. Now, uh, Everything is showing a significant schedule variance because I'm, you know, I don't have anything that shows progress in this column yet. Uh, but that's easy to do. I can simply uh, go to my window here and I can say, okay, let's call this define our definition of done. Let's call it 100% complete. And uh, do the same here for our definition of ready. Now, notice when I do that, the schedule variance drops to zero because it says, okay, well, we're complete. Uh, so we're looking pretty good. Now, let's take a look at this last task, Create GitHub Repository. Let me go ahead and stretch this one out a little bit. Remember, this is going to be compared to our baseline. Now, you notice the estimate at completion went up significantly and uh, this, by the way, is where videos are really cool because if you didn't notice, just rewind a couple seconds and you'll notice that that number went up significantly. Uh, let's also say that this one is maybe 25% complete. Aha, now look at that. You see the actual cost of work perform has changed from zero and the earned value has also gone up from zero uh, to 520. This is a bit of a complicated task because we extended the estimate that we thought would take to complete it. We also have a percent completion, uh, and it's behind where we should be at this point in time. So the day I'm recording this video is represented by this black line here. And if we were on schedule, this darker blue line, which represents progress, would be all the way up to that black line. So several things at play here, and you can see that it changes the uh, earned value and the actual cost of work completed uh, when we adjust that. Now create specimen API. Uh, I'm going to do something similar with create contract. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to mark that one as partially complete. And if you don't like clicking and dragging on the Gantt chart and right clicking, that's fine. You can simply double click here and percent complete. You can update. You're not locked into that 25, 50, 75, 100 percent either. You could uh, really put in any percent complete you want to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say 30 uh, percent complete. We said it was an eight hour job. Boom. And once again, you'll see our, uh, our earn value went up to 240, indicating 30% uh, of that original $800 of value is complete, or 240. Uh, actual cost of work perform is $578.50. Uh, 
Uh, let's take a look at design entity relationship diagram. Just kind of do a mental screen capture of, of some of the numbers here. I'm going to run back to my Gantt chart view and I'm going to um, tell you what, I'm going to switch this to entry table view. And I'm going to switch the view just a little bit uh, to cost. And for design and for design entity relationship diagram, I'm gonna inc I'm gonna add ten thousand dollars of fixed cost to this because remember our earned value calculations will take into account both cost and budget. Uh, now from view, I go to tables and I go back to more tables and I go to earned value. Let's go ahead for this one. Let's say that we did complete the item. So here we see the plan value for this was $16,800. The earned value is $16,800 because we've completed it. The actual cost of work performed, though, is significantly higher. Now, you notice it's not exactly $10,000 higher. I will say in a previous video when I set the baseline, I adjusted some budget numbers so we could see uh, how that would impact our baseline. So there's a little bit of carryover for that. But nonetheless, you can see there's a, a, a fairly significant increase in cost there. And then that's going to impact our cost variance in a negative way. And that will impact our estimated completion uh, and several other factors. So now with a few of these set, uh, we can take a look at our report. And uh, we can go to uh, dashboard and then uh, cost overview. And we can see where we have actual cost and remaining cost in our project. We can see cost variance on the left, which is grouped by the summary test. So foundation, create specimen API, so on and so forth. You see create specimen API, that's where I added $10,000 of fixed cost, and I increased the time it would take uh, to complete a task, which would increase its cost as well, because it's that time to completion, multiplied by the resources on that task and their rate. And we see a significant cost variance, uh, not unexpected here. Then up above, we have a cumulative, co uh, cumulative uh, percent complete and cumulative cost, and we can see that we're running a little bit high on cost there. Now let's take a look at our earned value report under costs. And uh, okay, this is going to tell us some important information. One note is that this uses some acronyms that are a little different from the acronyms that we use. So budgeted cost of work scheduled, or BWCS, is effectively the plan value. Uh, Budgeted cost of work performed is earned value. Actual cost of work performed uh, is looking at the, uh, the cost variance as well as the schedule variance. So budgeted cost of work scheduled, this gray line, is the progress we expected at this point in our project. Budgeted cost of work performed is the work we actually did. So you can see the gap between this gray line and the orange line is effectively how much we're behind schedule. Now, actual cost of work performed is saying, okay, of this work we performed, how much did it cost? And you see a blue line that's significantly above the orange line indicates that we are over budget. So uh, if we see this blue, gray, orange, that means we're over budget and behind schedule, which as I say, that's not uncommon. Uh, but on the other hand, if we had the gray line here, the orange line above the gray line, and the blue line below the gray line, then we would be both ahead of schedule and ahead of our budget. We can scroll down a little bit, and it's going to show us our cost and schedule variance over time, which will give us an idea, is the learning curve working? Are, oh, even if we started off behind schedule and behind budget, are we catching up or are we falling uh, further behind? Now. We also have the cost and schedule performance index. Remember, that's a ratio that we can use to apply to our original estimates to say, given these indices, at the end of this project, this is how much we think it's going to cost, and this is 
when we think it's going to finish. So once again, if we look at these, we can say, okay, over time, are we getting better? Or are we getting worse? Remember a schedule performance index and a cost performance index below one means that we are behind schedule and over budget respectively. A number greater than one uh, means that we are ahead of schedule and under budget respectively. So given that these uh, numbers are under one and given the changes that I just made, uh, they're declining, you know, that's something that's going to raise a red flag that we're going to want to pay attention to. And as a project manager, we're going to try to want to get those back on track. Up at the top, if you don't like graphs, we have the raw numbers. Uh, estimate at completion. So that's going to take our, uh, our cost performance index and multiply it by our budget and let us know here's what we think it's going to cost. Actual cost of work perform, how much have we outlaid? Budgeted cost of work perform means uh, what's the value of work we delivered based on our original schedule and budget. So that's a look at how uh, by keeping our project up to date in Microsoft Project, it will generate a lot of these earned value formulas for us. And then we can use reports as a project manager to keep an eye on our project and get an idea of how the project is going to end. And then we can set expectations as needed early and hopefully find some mitigation steps if we find that we are falling behind schedule or we have a cost overrun. As always, I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.